guys, first I would like to say welcome back to the Totally Book Obsessed members that have been absent for quite some time. It is good to have you back, and welcome to the mysterious new Saturday, who will be revealed on, you guessed it, Saturday. So this week we're talking about genres in YA, and funny story about the word genre. Up until, like, last week, I was pronouncing it genre, and I don't know why I did that, why I was French with the word, but, um... Yeah, cool story, right? So I'm talking about historical fiction. Um, this encompasses both historical fiction and historical fantasy, um, and steampunk, so I'm gonna be tackling stuff that isn't from this time period. I would be remiss to not mention some classics such as The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak and A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. These two are just fantastic. Um, the Book Thief is about World War II, and it's just so powerful and kind of, kind of incredibly sad. And then A Great and Terrible Beauty is more fun, but it has kind of a dark edge to it. It's about a girl who lives at a very straight-laced boarding school, and she and some of her friends discover that they can kind of do some magic. I made a list of, of books that I just want to throw out there, and, um, we'll see if I can get to all of them. Um, the only steampunk that I have on here, I think, yep, is Leviathan by Scott Westerfeld. This is another one that I would almost consider as a historical fiction classic. Um, it's just fantastic. It's an alternate retelling of World War I, I believe, um, or the Cold War. No, I think it's World War I, <laughs> and um, it's just ridiculously awesome, and there are illustrations in it, and those illustrations are fantastic. Another steampunk that I just totally forgot to write on here is Bone Shaker by Sherry Priest. This is a just so much fun kind of book. I think it's technically adult, but I think some people consider it YA because it's just got such a young voice to it, I guess. For historical fantasy, I've got Magic Under Glass by Jacqueline Dolamore. That one's just great. It, it has a steampunk aspect back to it, but it's about this girl who's part of like a traveling circus troupe type of thing, and she meets this clockwork kind of guy trapped inside a clockwork body, and it's just, it's really cool. Also, The Fairy Ring by Kiki Hamilton. This one, there are fairies in this history, but it's still very much about street urchins and living in a time where you have to scavenge for food, and it takes place, I think, in... England or something? I'm not I'm not totally sure. I I read these books, I promise, but it's been a while. Haunting Violet by Alexander Harvey. This is a book about a girl who can see ghosts and her mother does fake seances, so it's kind of ironic that she can actually see ghosts when her mother pretends that she can communicate with spirits. And uh, The Vespertine by Sandra Mitchell and subsequently The Spring Suite. Those are two excellent historical fantasy novels. Um, I would especially recommend The Vespertine. It's written fantastically and you, you really get a feel for the time period that it's set in. I think it's the 1800s, but oh, so wonderful. Born Wicked by Jessica Spotswood. It's about three sisters who are witches in a time when witches are being hunted and uh, it's really good. I love that book too. For more uh, realistic historical fiction, we've got um, Open Wounds by Joe Lunovitz. This is a book about a boy who likes to sword fight, and he ends up teaching how to stage sword fight. Um, it's, it's a great story. It follows the journey of this one person from when he's very young to when he's, I think, in young adulthood. So it's just, it's really great. It's a very lesser known book, and I would definitely recommend that you check it out. I loved it to pieces. Secret Letters by Leah Shire, about a girl who believes that Sherlock Holmes is her biological father, and then gets involved in a subsequent kidnapping mystery, and it's pretty fast-paced and exciting. Um, I would also recommend Guilt by Catherine Longshore, if I haven't talked about that enough. Um, I'll leave a link here, I gave some early buzz for it, I think two weeks ago, so I cannot recommend that book enough. And those are all the historical fiction books that I would like to recommend to you. All of those were at least four star reads for me, so I would definitely recommend that you pick those up if you haven't read them already. Um, if historical fiction doesn't really sound like your kind of thing, I would still recommend that you try it, or at least in ease into it with historical fantasy or steampunk. It's a genre that a lot of people are reluctant to get into, but it's one that I've always really liked, and I just, I can't recommend it enough. It's really cool to read about the past 
and how characters then relate to us now. So, I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.